Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to church tonight. Uh, we hope you've had a great week so far. Uh, looking forward to our time together. I want to start tonight by reading from Psalm 40. Um, and I shared uh, from this same uh, uh, psalm this morning because I thought it was a good launching pad as we step into worship and as we hear from the, hear from the word. Uh, it says this, verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and he gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Now, I don't know what sort of week you've come from and uh, there are different challenges that people are facing at the moment. But the great thing is, is when we come together in worship and tonight here we are, whether we're in our homes, our cars, um, wherever we may find ourselves, that we can come to the Lord with our struggles, with our frustrations, with our uncertainties, with our fears and know that God's love and grace is present for us. And so I'm praying tonight that you'll be encouraged through tonight's service as we uh, worship and uh, hear from the word. So let me pray and uh, we'll spend some time in worship. Father. Thank you so much for the opportunity we have to be together tonight. Thank you that you speak afresh into our life, love, grace and mercy. And Father, we've all had different weeks, but we come to you tonight. We lay all of our lives down, all of the expressions of it, all the frustrations of it, all the fears of it. We lay it down to you as, as an offering tonight. As we draw near to you, may you draw near to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll just hand over to Matt and the team to lead us in worship. Thank you. You give life. You are love.
song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus a name above every other name Jesus, the only wind that could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your arms to those around me. Jesus, a name above every other name. only one that could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me.
Good to have you with us tonight. Just wanted to take a few moments to update you and talk to you about reopening face-to-face with church next Sunday. We're really looking forward to being together again. We've missed you all and we're excited that uh, not only is it face-to-face but our um, online stuff, at least our live stream in the morning, will continue on as well as a valuable ministry of our church. Now the uh, leadership team has been spending considerable time talking and praying through how to move into this next season safely um, with church services and other ministries in the building. Um, By next Sunday, uh, actually probably by the end of today, uh, vaccination rates will have exceeded 85% double vaxxed, which aligns with the government guidelines and health advice for churches, as well as what the Baptist Association have suggested uh, and made as recommendations for reopening. And it makes space for everyone, both uh, vaccinated and unvaccinated, all are welcome to come along to church from next week. As we reopen, we encourage anyone who feels uh, ready and comfortable to come and join us. But if you'd prefer to keep doing church online, that'll be available in line with our morning service. It's God's spirit in each of us that binds us together. And as we've seen and experienced over this season, the encouragement, the conviction, the healing and the truth is all because of his faithful love for us. Please let us know how we can be supporting you well during this season and also share with us what God's doing in our lives. We'll have opportunity again 
in-house to be doing story time. So think about the way God has been ministering to you in the last few months. As we come back in, we all know the drill. We've been here before. Um, when we do come back next week, uh, we'll need to check in with our Service New South Wales app or if you don't have access to that, our, um, we'll have a written registry there that you can sign in on. We won't be able to have congregational singing indoors, but uh, in the night service we're going to be heading out to the car park again as we were doing um, last time lockdown came around. So, but you'll still need to be wearing your mask. Um, but singing will be able to happen in that, in that capacity. In our morning service, both Twinkles and uh, All Stars will be back on. Yay for the kids. And the leaders are super keen to see everybody again. All of our kids' uh, ministry team has been double vaxxed and will follow all the best care practices. Um, in the morning service, kids over 12 will need to stay with their parents and carers in the church. And Radiate won't be starting again yet. Um, if you're coming to the morning service, you'll need to book in through Try Booking. Um, there'll be a link on the email. But in the night service, we won't need to do that just because numerically we don't hit the limit anyway. We want to thank you all so much for digging in during the last few months. It's been tough, a tough season for most of us, but God is faithful and has continued to work in our midst. Thanks for your prayer, um, support, not only for our church family and us as leaders, but also for the beautiful ministry that has been going on down here throughout lockdown. Um, alongside of this, I just want to uh, bring the normal announcements as well. Um, so, happy birthday to Ryan and Trish. Uh, the Community Care Spring uh, Exercise Challenge is still on. There's still opportunity to give to that. If you go to Community Care's website, there's a Give Now button that you can press and, um, and donate there. So there's 14 ten team members. They've challenged themselves to do 3,000 kilometres of either walking, riding, uh, running or swimming. And uh, they're well past the halfway mark and have raised about $8,700 so far. If you need to contact the church, here's uh, some of the contact details. We can find out more information on our website or email us, call us, however you like to do it, and the Facebook page is always up there as well. We just want to encourage you, uh, if you are someone who does direct deposit, this might be a good occasion just to think about and check that that um, direct deposit is still going, because sometimes they have a time limit and you may need to reset it again. Um, but that, that's one way that you can give, um, again, being face-to-face, -face, there'll, there'll be a, a box up the back where you can put your offerings when you come, if that's the way you prefer to do it. Or there's also uh, text to give there where you can text the word give to that number and you can set it up that way and then it's as simple as pulling out your phone during the offering spot and texting 20 if you want to donate $20 or however much you feel led to give towards the uh, ministry of the church. Let me just pray for our offerings and uh, then we'll continue on with our service. Father God, we just thank you. Uh, you are the God who blesses us. You are the God who is constantly at work in us and in our community. And we just want to pray for these offerings, however they've come in. And we pray that you would just multiply the, um, the fruitfulness of that money to, to serve your kingdom and your purposes. So, Father, we just pray over that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, now will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone has, who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so the Father may be glorified in the Son. 
You may ask me for anything in my name, and I'll do it. Hello everyone. Uh, it's lovely to be here. Uh, I'm here and you're where you are, but it's lovely to be here uh, to bring the message this morning. In the whole thing of first since lockdown, today was the first day I put shoes on for church since July. So that's my random thing. Uh, I haven't preached just to the live stream before, so I hope I look in the right spot for most of the time, I do miss seeing your faces and am really excited that next week there will be people here in the building for that. And it's my prayer that each of us experience God's presence with us this morning. I want to say thank you to Steve, who uh, gave a great sermon last week from John 15 about remaining in Jesus. And just that picture of the vine and the branches, that sense of abiding with, with Christ. And it actually leads into today's message. It was completely uncoordinated uh, and we're just moving one step or one chapter backwards in John, looking at John 14. And thank you to Rihanna for reading that passage for us today. You did a great job. So as we begin, let me just pray. Lord God, we ask that you speak to us today from your word. We ask that you would give us soft hearts to hear you, that we would be open to what you want to say to us by your spirit. And so we are here to be with you, to worship you and to honour you. And I pray this, knowing that you are the God who speaks and the God who reaches out to us. Amen. So I just want to remind you that this passage in John, starting at John 13 and going to John 17, this long passage uh, from Jesus, he's speaking to his disciples before going to the cross. He knows that the end is coming. And so these, you know, when the end is coming, what are the most important things that he wanted to leave with his disciples in this last opportunity, what did he want to speak into them and prepare them for in what they would face? And so I was trying to get my head around, you know, what, are we going, what do you want to say, God, uh, today? And I found it helpful to make a table because my brain likes tables. And I'm sure there's people listening going, yes, I love a good table. And I'm sure there's probably just as many others of you that say, oh no, I have put some pictures in, so hopefully the creative people um, will appreciate those. And so I could see in this passage in John 14 that Jesus is doing two things. He is speaking about himself and then he's also speaking into his disciples. And we're going to develop these thoughts as we go along, obviously, because the table is only just starting. And in verses 6 to 9, it says, uh, Jesus answered Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How could you say, show us the Father? And so we see that Jesus is talking about himself and describing the role that he plays. And when I read this passage, um, it's really easy to go straight to the, the way, the truth, and the life part of it. It's the famous part. And, you know, I want to say thank you to Anne for her talk. I almost felt this morning listening to that that I didn't need to get up here at all. So thank you for that. Um, but thinking about the way, the truth and the life, I grew up singing the song, you know, with the actions and everything in Sunday school. I knew this verse. It's just something that I've always known. So it's hard for me to imagine the impact that it had on the disciples when they heard it for this first or only time. And the words are so simple. 
but the meaning is so profound. Philip was obviously puzzled by it because of his question, and I can imagine him thinking, how could this man, Jesus, be the way to God? Why him? Why not someone else? And so we begin to see the divine nature of Jesus. He is more than just a man. And so we see that Jesus is revealing the Father. He's revealing revealing God. It says twice in that passage, Know me, know the Father. See me, see the Father. And so this, this picture that Jesus represents the Father to us. And it's not like putting on a uniform and the uniform says, I'm part of this group. But it's the, from the inside that Jesus embodies God and, and Father and, and shows him to us. And I love the verse in Hebrews 1, it's verse 3, and it says in the message version, the Son perfectly mirrors God and is stamped with God's nature. And so we see that Jesus uh, reveals the Father. We also see that he is the way and the truth and the life. And there's the sense in the original Greek that Jesus is the way because he is the truth and the life. And Jesus is the way to God because he brought truth from God. He brought God's truth into the world. He made life with God possible through his death and resurrection. He was the only one without sin and so could pay that penalty for sin on our behalf. And then after dying, he was raised to life. And that momentous event brought victory over sin and death and Satan for all of us who accept what he did on our behalf. And so because Jesus died and rose again, we can now experience life and grace and freedom. He is the way to the Father because he opened that door to us for uh, life and salvation. It's a very bold claim that Jesus is the way. And it makes me think about other religions who have claims as well and do this and you'll please God or do this and you'll be made acceptable. And it reminded me of the time I went to India on one of the mission trips and we were preparing and we were told when you give a talk or give your testimony, when you refer to God, uh, refer to him as the one true living God. And I'm like, oh, okay. And they said, because, you know, in Hinduism, there's just so many gods. And the tendency is to just add one more. So let's just add the Christian God to the mix. And then everybody will be pleased and we won't offend any of the gods. But they really needed to understand that there is one God, one true and living God. And I see in that statement, in other words... Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And if he wasn't the only way, what's the point of us following him? But we believe the Bible. We believe what God said in the Bible is true, and we put our faith in him. The search for God ends in Jesus, and he isn't hiding. He is the way, the truth, and the life and reveals the Father to us. And so we see in our table, um, there's a partnership. And I'm reading now from verses 10 to 11. Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. And this 
amazing statement, I am in the Father and he, he is in me. And sometimes that in, well, I don't really get it, uh, the contemporary English version says, I am one with the Father and the Father is one with me. And it's just this cohesion, that, just that sense that they are united together. Jesus doesn't do his own thing, but acts in accordance with the Father's will. He shares the nature and character of God. So when he is working, he's doing God's um, will. And that's just a natural outworking of that. And then there's this statement. It is the Father living in me who is doing his work. And again, repeats this idea of this partnership. And this is the statement that really struck me this week. It is the Father living in me who is doing his work. And it just provides this understanding that Jesus isn't just trying really hard. Sometimes as a Christian, I feel like if I just try really hard, you know, I'll get there. But Father God works in Jesus. And so uh, looking back at last week, I just love that picture of the vine and the branches that shows this natural and organic connection that when the branch is, you know, enmeshed with the vine, it grows and it has life. It doesn't have to try really hard. It just happens. And there's so many stories in the gospel of Jesus going away to a, a quiet place or a private place just to be with the Father, to pray, to be um, refreshed, to seek God's guidance for what was to come. And, and just living that life of dependence and obedience, which it's a challenge to me. And um, something that I want in my life as well. Um, but we can see that Jesus lived the work of the Father. And again, reading the Gospels, just all the stories of the amazing and insightful teaching that he gave the people that he healed, the people that he rose, uh, raised from the dead. These are not things that a human could do, but God can. And God did it through Jesus. And hold that thought, I'll come to that later, if you're the one thinking, and us too. Uh, after explaining these fundamental truths of who he is, Jesus speaks into his disciples and so it's a sense that he is passing on the baton, going from this is where we've come from and this is where you're going. He's equipping the disciples for what is to come. And so he's speaking into them, he's telling them how he sees them and what he sees their identity in this new way of life is and what is their role to play. So I'm reading from verse 12. And it says, I tell you the truth, whoever has faith in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And so um, Jesus is, by revealing the Father, he's sharing the Father with his disciples. And so sharing the fatherhood of God makes the disciples and us children of God. We are children of God, which is such a powerful and revolutionary image, uh, particularly back then, that you know God would be so personal and so intimate as to be a father. God isn't a, a far-off judge that you have to try and appease, but he's father. He's present in people's lives. He lives in community and family together. That's the identity that Jesus brought, that we are children of Father God. And what is their role to be? Jesus said, whoever has faith in me will do what I have been doing. They will do even greater things things than these and it goes against the idea that oh, that was Jesus 
Jesus can do those things, but he's, Jesus is God, so I can't do those things. But he's telling us that we are doing even greater things. And I don't think he's saying you're going to do more important or more spectacular or more, um, you know, like that. Like raising people from the dead, that's pretty much the pinnacle. So we're not doing greater, better than that. But I think there is the idea that you'll do, you know, more in number or more in spread. And so we can see in Acts how the disciples and the early church preached the gospel and so many came to faith. And it started in Jerusalem and went to Israel and went to the whole known world. So, you know, there's this sense of greater work. But it's not just greater work. It's greater work because Jesus went to be with God. His work was finished. He overcame sin and death. And because he could go to be with Father God he was able to send his spirit and it's the spirit in us that continues to do those greater works. And so we see again, there is a partnership. The works we do and even the greater things we do are not done in our strength. It's not our ability. I can't raise people from the dead, but God, God's spirit living in me can do that so this partnership exists that we have God's spirit the spirit of Jesus in us Romans 8 verses 10 and 11 say Christ lives in you and we sang that in one of our songs Christ is in you and God's spirit now lives in you and I love this verse from Galatians 2.20. And I'm reading this time from the uh, Passion Translation, which is a, a bit of a new twist. My old identity has been co-crucified with Christ and no longer lives. And now the essence of this new life is no longer mine for the anointed one lives his life through me. We live in union as one. My new life is empowered by the faith of the Son of God who loves me so much that he gave himself for me, dispensing his life into mine. And it's a mystery. It's so hard to understand, um, you know, God in us. And I think something that will continue to try and get our heads around for as long as we live. But it's going to be so great when we get to heaven and we'll go, oh, I get it now. And so we see that the work that Jesus started, the spirit continues. And it makes me think of, you know, the pebble dropped in a, in a pond and it's got the center and then the ripples just come out and out. And so that is the work that God is continuing through us by the Spirit. Right, so I love that this passage talks about God as Father, Son and Spirit. And I will say that Spirit does sort of turn up in verse 16, so I'm cheating a bit there. Um, but they each have their role and we can relate to each of them. Jesus has the partnership with the Father doing that work that only he could do. But we get to participate in that relationship of God when we put our faith in Jesus. And I come back to the verse 10 that says, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. And we could easily say it is the Spirit of Christ living in me who is doing his work. And I really felt that was God's question to me. That's what really struck me that we can have this partnership with God. In my Christian uh, life, it took me a long time 
to really get this truth. I'm a doer. I like being in control of everything. Uh, I like being in control of my own actions. And, you know, I, I was taught that, you know, God will come and live in me and live in my heart. And I thought, yeah, that's okay. That sounds pretty passive. You can just sort of live in that part there. But I really struggled with, I don't want to be a puppet and just God's going to do whatever he wants and I have no say in that. And I had my aha moment when I read Colossians 1.29, which says, I work hard with all the strength of Christ. His strength works powerfully in me. And somewhere I understood that even though I have a part and I work hard, it's the, the strength of Christ. So I'm not a robot. I still get to make choices. I still have my part to play. But I am empowered by this phenomenal power of God, the, so much power that raised Jesus from the dead. And because he has made it possible for me to live in relationship with him, I can now choose the right way which in sin I was powerless to choose again that's one of the mysteries of the Christian faith that I'm still exploring and I'm sure I will for a long time so we see that the disciples role and our role as well is to have faith in Jesus as the way to God to do his work and even greater uh, because of this partnership that we have by Jesus' spirit living in us. But then in the uh, last section, verses 13 and 14, we see another aspect of this partnership, which really uh, enriches our understanding of how we do Jesus' work. And we do that. Let me read it. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. And so we see that we are able to do Jesus' work because of this prayerfulness that we have. And, you know, prayer as a topic could have its own sermon. It could have its own sermon series. I don't even know how many books have been written about prayer. So, you know, we're not going to get very far with that in this uh, time here. But the point in this passage about prayer is that we pray in Jesus' name. And it's not just about saying, in Jesus' name, amen. It's not a formula. It's not a, rest, you know, just say this and it'll all work. But it's the relationship. So a name, particularly back in Bible times, signified the character of the person, who they, they really are, their essence, and can also... Uh, signified the authority that they have. You have to know someone pretty well to know their character. And so to know Jesus' character, to be able to pray in his name, you need to spend time with him so that you can know his views on different topics, so that you can know where he's leading you and where you're headed in life. It's a, it's a deliberate and intentional and intimate thing to know the, the character of Jesus and it isn't something to be rushed. I've been uh, reflecting on that um, lately uh, and just the idea that I want to give my best self to God uh, and if I'm run ragged and going here and there and doing all sorts of things, and, you know, my time with God is just, you know, five minutes here or there. It's just, it loses that richness. And so for me, it's become a decision of choosing the best over the good. And, you know, during lockdown, we had the opportunity to slow down a bit. And, well, some of us, I did. And for me, it was a really great um, pressing into Jesus time. And I'm hoping that I can keep those good rhythms as life opens up again. And so we see that we ask in Jesus' name and therefore in line with his character. 
and that is how we participate in the work of Jesus. And so I was thinking, you know, how do we sort of wrap this up? And so I, I need a little summary. So I've just put the, the main points in the circles uh, of what was described and talked about. But I don't want us just to know something intellectually from today. I want, and I hope you want as well, that we have a spirit transformation, that God speaks to us and changes us and makes us more like him. And so uh, as, as you're listening, I want you to think for one thing, what is God speaking into your life from today's message? If you're a disciple of Jesus, he is speaking to you here in this moment and I believe that uh, God speaks to us, you know, still. And you can look where you've come from and you can see where you're going and what does Jesus want, in t- want to speak into that? So I ha- I, there were a lot of questions that I could see could come out of the different points in um, the passage. But as I read these questions, I want you to think of the one that really resonates with you, just one, uh, so that you can take your one question to God during this week and you can have that uh, just time of connection together that you can hear from God and let him speak into your life and uh, where you're heading. And so the fact that Jesus reveals Father God to us, the questions are, do I know God, not just know about him? Do I want to accept Jesus as the way to God? And if you don't know God, or if you don't experience the life, grace and freedom that I've been talking about, but you would like to, then I really encourage you to speak to a friend or family member that you know follows God or call a church. We'd love to be able to talk to you. Or here's another question. If Jesus lives in me by his spirit, what does my life reveal? Jesus is the way. So here are some questions. Where am I heading? Where have I come from? Who am I traveling with? Or who am I letting influence me? The Father does his work in Jesus and in us by the Spirit. So here's some questions. Am I living in an attitude of surrender to God? And do I desire to live his way? Am I keeping in step with the Spirit? Is my life too busy or crowded or distracted with other things that I can't hear God's voice? What changes could I make to help me press into God? We are asked to have faith in Jesus and trust him. Is there an issue, maybe a health or financial or relational challenge that you're experiencing that you're struggling with and you're having trouble holding on to God's goodness? There are people available to pray with you after the service if you would like that. And Jesus' work, we do Jesus' work. What work does he want to do through me in this next season of my life? Whose strength am I relying on in living for Jesus? And this is a line from a song. When they see me, do they see you? And if you're thinking about prayer, how well do I know Jesus' character? How much do I seek him for that? Are my prayers to God in line with his character? Am I praying at all? Am I in the middle of a dry spell? And I know that can be really challenging, but I think press in. That's all I can say. Even if it doesn't feel exciting, just press in. There are a couple of songs that I've been reflecting on. If you're a music sort of person, you might want to use these this week. Abide With Me by Matt Redman and Live Like That by the Sidewalk Prophets. And that's the song that when they see me, do they see you? That's where that question came from. 
So I'm just going to pray as we end. So join me, please. Father God, we want to thank you that you made the way possible back to you through Jesus. We want to thank you that you stepped down into this earth, that Jesus revealed Father God to us and that we can have life in you. We thank you that it's faith in you, that you put the faith in us, in you, and it's your spirit in us that does the work, that we can just that we can trust you, that we can have a life of uh, partnership with you. We want to pray that you will continue to do your transforming work in us. We pray we just want to say that we love you and we want to be all that you have made us to be. And I pray these things in accordance with Jesus' character. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see t'was grace that tore my heart to feel and grace my fears real how precious did that grace appear The hour I first believed My chains are gone and I've been set free My God, my Savior is raising me In thy gift flood his mercy reigns on end in love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me. These words. My hope secures He will my shield and portion be As long as life endures My chains are gone and I've been set free My God, my Savior is raising me in that can you fly his mercy reigns an end in love amazing grace the earth will soon dissolve like snow the sun for them to shine but God who calls